Let's bring the conversation here to Nigeria. Tuesday's meeting between the leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the federal government has again ended without an agreement. This means the six-month-old strike by public university lecturers is set to continue. On March 14, the union extended the industrial action by another two months to allow the government to meet all of its demands. A 12-week extension was announced on the 9th of May. Since uh, May 9th, the union has remained on strike, vowing to persist until its demands are met. The academics are seeking improved welfare, revitalization of public universities and academic uh, autonomy, among other demands. One bone of contention for the academics is non-payment of university revitalization funds, which amounts to about 1.1 1 .1, 1 .1 trillion naira. And of course, uh, there's you know so much that has been said and is still being said with regards you know the strike. There's people who even completely are against us going on strike. Yeah, um, I mean there are conversations about this. We did see how Festus Kiyamu was trending on Twitter because he had said that the parents should be begged to go on to parents should beg us to, to go back to school. We know that you know this history of striking with uh, between us and the federal government. I mean, since 1999, it's been about 16 times that ASO has gone on strike. There have been several agreements. Unfortunately, it, is, it does seem that they've not been able to reach a middle ground. Now, the most recent one being this meeting with the Nimi Briggs Committee, which happened on Tuesday. And what we're seeing is that the, the main agenda for this meeting was the renegotiation of the 2009 agreements, yeah. which they were unfortunately unable to uphold. So it's, what, what is the future for... Nigeria's education, what is the future for our young people? These endless meetings. President the other time called for the Minister of Education to put an end to the strike in two weeks. Nothing was done about it. In fact, I read that they were supposed to start the strike last year. It was Nairek that stepped in. So it's almost like you're going to school today, not knowing that, you know, just thinking this might be my last day in school for another seven months, which is not what our young people deserve. Yeah, of course, you know, now that you've brought that point, you know, it, it it's, you know, also a good time to uh, speak about the effect that it has on the young Nigerians who are meant to be in school. You know, people who have, who have projected that they will be graduating at this time and, you know, would be taking their lives in a different direction, you know, by 2023, 2024, 2025. Now all of that is, has to be put on hold. Um, it must be really stressful. It's also stressful to lecturers, you know, also who haven't been paid in, the five, in five or six months now. It's extremely yes. stressful. Um, but there's, there's been an argument, you know, about you know, how Nigerian universities maybe need to have a rethink and Nigeria, as it's, uh, you know, as a country, also has a, needs to have a rethink about um, the funding of its universities and how universities should be able to generate funds for themselves mm -hmm. instead of always relying on the federal government. There's numerous of these, you know, types of conversations. They've given different examples how research and some other things, you know, should be able to bring um, funding for universities. But I think all of this, you know, really still points towards the value that we place on education that I've always spoken about as a country, how vital and how important do, you know, is education to us as, you know, as a nation. Is a, the federal government always going to be desperate to ensure that the education, you know, level of education is top notch? Are they always going to fund, you know, everywhere? Are they going to make the lecturers comfortable in every way Absolutely. Um, or not? I Those forgot to mention that, that at the end of the day, you know, it would be nice to, to find out what Joe thinks. He will join us for our South Africa in a moment. But, you know, it's important to also mention that when they leave the schools or the university, they go into the job market and then there's a cap. They tell you, oh, you have to be 25 with how many years experience. You spent all that time on strike at Absolutely. home. So how, how are we hoping to cater to this number of young people? Sad. Anyway, we will continue these conversations, you know, as we proceed here on Breakfast Center. We do hope that an end comes to it. Today is day 184 of the strike uh, by ASU. But that's all that we can take now. We have Johansson on standby to let us know what's happening outside Africa. But before you do, Joe, what are your thoughts on the ASU strike? My thoughts are pathetic. Um, funny enough, I saw uh, a few tweets uh, by some students on social media who were even agitating that they do not want to go back to school now. Because they've Very all gotten shocking. jobs. They, they started making money. And yeah, then... so they said there's no need to... I mean, I saw a tweet that said, I don't want to go back to school now because I'll be writing my exams all the way from December 1st down to 31st when I should be having my holiday. So I just want to stay back. Don't call off the strike the, now. Wait the, uh, till end of the year. Wow. That's a pity. Okay. It's, it, it's That's what really you get. That's really what you get. That's the reaction you get when, when things like these linger. It now becomes a numb. And people start to find alternative sources of living. And as humans, as, as youths, as kids, children, uh, who are indeed uh, passing through the university uh, level, 
they will be thinking, you know what, can I do other things? Can I pick up a skill? And like you said, Olive, once they start making money, that's They're no longer well. interested. Well, certainly be following up with this, but uh, thank you very much, Joel. Tell us what's happening outside Africa in a moment. All right. Let's go straight to um, what's happening outside Africa. It might interest you, by the way, guys, that uh, the World Health Organization is calling on you, Osawage, Olive, myself, every other person, uh, they're inviting the public to find a new name for calling uh, what is known as monkeypox. Uh, they need to change the name. Yes, this help is indeed a clarion call. It's coming up less uh, than a few days ago due to the stigmatizing designation for the fast-spreading disease amid concerns about the name. So on Tuesday, WHO spokeswoman and of course uh, the Hencho, uh, Fidela Achaib, uh, told reporters in Geneva that human monkeypox was given its name before current best practices in naming diseases. And this has had a negative impact on its awareness. For instance, uh, take uh, Brazil. There, there have been reported cases of people attacking monkeys over the disease and the fears. So she said, and I quote, we want really to find a name that is not stigmatizing. She added that she's uh, also calling for consultation and saying it's now open for everyone. So Olive and Osage, anyone who's watching us right now, you can decide to give uh, a name to WHO. How to do that? Well, I'll tell you. Just check in their email addresses and you will find it. So I thought about a few names as well myself. Uh, and uh, a few names there um, are indeed uh, names that make you think and say, you know what? Uh, can we call it hot pox, human pox, or something else? Well, here's a little fact before you start thinking of names, uh, before you come up with names yourself. The disease was first discovered in humans in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo with a spread among humans, which uh, was indeed uh, rapid. It was also discovered in certain West and Central African countries where it is endemic. Now, the name monkeypox was decided because the virus was originally identified in monkeys kept for research in Denmark in 1958. However, the disease is found in a number of animals and most frequently in rodents. So, when you think of a name, make sure you also have that background fact check before you go ahead and start naming it. So, I did come up, I, I, come up, I came up with a name and I'm going to ask uh, Oliver Nasagi what name you think will work. Hot pox. Hot Human pox sounds pox. more like Hot it. Hot pox, yeah. You know. Hot pox. No, yeah. no, hot makes it sound trendy. Killer pox. What did you call it? Killer pox. I mean, it doesn't have pox. that, you know, a, a death rate that makes it a killer pox. Well, you know, people so are dying from it. Died. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not, oh, not like... Oh, let's call it the pox. The deadly the pox. pox. No, the pox sounds too vague Basic. and, you know, you need something more concrete, by the way. Well, I'll let you guys do the thinking, by the way. So, let me bring you the second story from outside Africa. Now we have left WHO, World Health Organization. Let's go straight to China. China's uh, Sichuan province has ordered all factories to shut down for six days to ease a power shortage in the region as sweeps across the country. Now, Sichuan is a key manufacturing location for the semiconductor and solar panel industries, and the power rationing will hit factories belonging to some of the world's biggest electronics companies. Um, I'm talking about companies that include Apple, supplier of Fascon, and Intel. The province is also China's lithium mining hub, a key component of electric car batteries, and the shutdown may push up the cost of the raw materials, analysts have said. So, uh, when you talk about um, solar energy, you talk about all of that, uh, it's going to face a difficult time. Now that the world is going through an economic downturn, this is also going to be a big problem because China, known as one of the biggest world's manufacturers, will be shutting down these industries. It means it is going to be tough. I'm talking about Intel, talking about Apple, talking about your solar panels, where people get them from, they will actually go on a break. Reason? Because of the heat waves. Now, if you do recall, um, England also had this same issue. On the flip side, uh, Brits are bracing up for thunderstorms and flash flooding today. Yes, as the rain finally brings an end to the heat wave. Well, it is not the end as temperatures are set to rise above 30 degrees Celsius again before the end of the month. We've seen football games uh, played this past weekend where they actually introduced water breaks because of the heat. 
and now they will be going uh, uh, outside of that uh, water break to possibly stopping it because it's going to be quite different this time. Reason is they're expecting flash floods. Now, hundreds indeed flocked to beaches and open water over the weekend as some areas indeed saw. But showers across the UK are now forecasted over the coming week with some areas being put on weather warnings as the risk of flashes increases. And that's a good story for those who live in the UK and England. It was a tough time. The heat was just too much and now they have that break. And talking of England, um, Osage, uh, I don't know if you saw what's been trending, but one of the biggest tweets that came up um, uh, earlier hours, uh, our time uh, was um, Elon Musk actually tweeting that he wants to buy Manchester United. And after putting up that tweet, uh, Manchester United fans like Osage were super excited. But unfortunately, he decided to bring it down and said it was a joke. I don't know how that sounds, but <laughs> it's Tell one thing for you to say. You are happy that he's about to buy your club. And then, you know who he is, of course, he's got Tell the money. Tell him to stay away from Lecky. And, and then, and you then know why <laughs> Elon Musk has that, you know, made that joke? Like he wanted to buy Manchester United. So uh, for those who... Uh, viewers outside Nigeria, in Yoruba here in Nigeria, Yoruba language, you want to ask how much something is, you say Eloni, so Elon Musk, Eloni. Oh, Lord. Yeah, oh, Manchester Lord. United. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Okay, so possibly you also oh, added, um, is there anything like Jara? Is there Jara on top? If I buy yeah, mine, can I also have like, like the entire man you fans, you know, something like that. And, you know. I don't Funny know enough, how much I, money I, you would have been sold for if, you know, he was I mean, some, it, it's, still, it's still a really wealthy club. Still, it's still one of, you know, top three, I guess. But the yeah. thing is, um, I'm sure a lot of Manchester United fans will be, you know, excited to see that because they want to see some change, you know, and everyone is still trying to figure out what's going on. You know, if it maybe needs new owners, better investments, you know, and, and all of that, then maybe that will be the answer. And I, I really don't think this, this would be the end of, you know, I know Elon, Elon Musk likes to troll every now and then, but it may not be the end. He, he may, may really have considered yep. it. Um, yeah, I agree. The Tesla boss, before he, he puts up that tweet, he, he may have, possibly his lawyers told him, listen, you still have a case with Twitter. Hey, and you're putting this up. Be quick, put it down. And then he takes it down and says, it's a oh, joke, it's, it's a, a joke. hoax, and so yeah. on and so forth. But these are the stories I brought to you from outside of Africa. Elon Musk tweeting, saying he wants to buy Manchester United. The heat wave in England, that's about to come to an end. And they're about to uh, experience a flash flood. So it's coming to an end abruptly, if you put it that way. And then, of course, World Health Organization looking for a name. They need to rename what they call monkeypox. And I've given them one, Hotbox. Hopefully they would um, t take your suggestion and uh, we'll see how this eventually goes. And especially for the heat wave, the, the, the heat wave coming to an end. I mean, it's been a really tough time in the UK. Climate change, climate change, global warming. These are conversations that we continue to have as well here on Breakfast Central. Thank you for joining us, Johansson, this morning. Thanks for having me. All right. All right.